in order to subscribe to my channel please click here or click here please share comment and like my videos and channel hey guys this is Gaurav welcome to SAS with ServiceNow in this session you will learn how exactly you can integrate ServiceNow and Jira system ServiceNow and Jira when you will integrate ServiceNow and Jira system they are two different systems so we need ServiceNow and we have Jira they will be connected with the help of API both the systems can communicate with each other with the help of API ServiceNow might send a call to Jira to get some data to feed some data and Jira might call to ServiceNow to get some data to feed some data into ServiceNow what we need to integrate in order to do this integration what exactly we need so we need two systems one is ServiceNow then we need Jira in ServiceNow we have to decide that which module we have to integrate in this demo we will integrate agile development 2.0 with Jira system then we have to think about trigger condition now all these things will come from your customers so they will provide you when exactly they want this integration or maybe as a as an architect you can also suggest some solutions to your stakeholders then you need outbound rest message that means you have to trigger a rest message from ServiceNow to Jira so that you can communicate with Jira system for Jira we need endpoint so that ServiceNow will know that endpoint and will be able to communicate and get the data or feed the data into Jira system we need authentication that means ServiceNow should be able to authenticate with Jira then we need resources that what kind of resources ServiceNow can connect to how ServiceNow can create issue how ServiceNow can create project how exactly it can fetch issue and projects or any other data which is in Jira system we also need to talk about more details of Jira system that means we have to confirm what fields we want to map in ServiceNow fields as well so for example we have agile development 2.0 now what fields of Jira system if we fetch those data into ServiceNow it should be matched to what fields of ServiceNow uh, agile development uh, application then payload what kind of payload we need so that we can create any record in Jira system then method what kind of method we have to utilize maybe post get or different other methods of rest integration we also need to have our own instance so you have to get your own instance you can see I have my own instance that is sasnow.atlassian.net this is my own instance which I registered Jira now in order to proceed with Jira integration because if you are a service now developer now it might happen that you're not aware of uh, different uh, details of Jira system because you are you are just a service now developer you're not a Jira developer in that case you might need to refer a lot of things so that you can integrate with Jira system that means rest API documentation which is provided by Jira so Atlassian provides this data they have a website where they have all the rest API documentation then we need Jira software now in order to do this integration you have to have this instance for demo purpose you can definitely uh, get a new instance of Jira Jira software I will show you how exactly you can get it so this is the website where you can get and register for a new instance of Jira it is also mentioned in the description 
of the video. Then you have Jira API example. Now Jira documentation also provides you examples that how exactly you can use for different situations, for different use cases. That's something you can see within G Jira API example. And we also have a website for that, uh, a link for that so that you can just access it. And whatever uh, action we take, like creation of the issue, it is just an example. You might find, find more examples over there. Unidirectional from service now. Now, as part of this demo, this integration will be unidirectional. That means only ServiceNow has access to connect to Jira. Jira does not have access to connect to ServiceNow. So all the calls will be generated, all the transactions will be generated from ServiceNow. So ServiceNow will become the source instance and Jira will become the destination. We will trigger the call from ServiceNow. It will send a call to Jira instance maybe for getting or fetching the records or maybe insertion of the records. And then Jira instance will revert with a response to ServiceNow. That's how this unidirectional integration would work. The next part is register for Jira and ServiceNow instance. That means now we will talk about the procedures. That how exactly you can integrate both systems. Now as part of this demo, or maybe if you wanna do it practically um, with your personal developer instance, then you have to follow these uh, steps. Now there are some steps which we, you, might need to f uh, you might not need to follow. For example, registration of uh, ServiceNow and Jira may be in your organization. Because in your organization, these systems are already being used. So if you already have Jira, you already have ServiceNow, then you don't have to register for them. And, and, and the important part here is because if you are a ServiceNow developer, then you just need to worry about your instance ServiceNow whatever development you will do in your instance. If there is some configuration needed, any authentication details needed, or any kind of development needed, maybe for bi-directional, or any, any, any other uh, kind of uh, uh, configurations needed from Jira system, in that case, Jira developer should be there in your organization or any, any team member, and they should be able to provide those informations. So as a ServiceNow developer, you don't have to worry uh, very much about these details because you would definitely have these uh, Jira developers. If you don't have those developers, then you definitely have to learn that how exactly you can do uh, development and coding in Jira system to, to uh, do this bi-directional integration else we can just directly do uh, unidirectional integration that's it so the first step we have as part of this demo and as part of the practical experience uh, which you can do as part of this integration is register for jira and servicenow instance if you are a servicenow developer so you should already have servicenow instance or if you have not registered yet then you can register one and get your servicenow instance Similarly, for Jira, you can just go to this website. It is also mentioned in the description and you can just click on try for free and then you can get your instance. You have to register for it and make sure you are getting cloud instance so that you can perform this integration. Because in order to do that, you have to have cloud instance so that you can do it and test it practically with your personal instances. Create a project in Jira. Once you are registered in Jira system, so if I go here, so I have this instance. So this is my instance of Jira. You can see I have here Jira software and these are all my records, issues which I have created in Jira system. I can create new as well if I want, but I want to integrate today this instance with my ServiceNow instance. So you can create a project here, but I have already created one. 
So in that case, you don't have to create it. But if once you will register, once you will get the instance, the first thing you have to do is create a project. Then you will validate if agile development is enabled in ServiceNow. Now I'm talking about this because if uh, you are performing this integration, this module has to be enabled, then only you can do this integration. So if I will go to my instance and I will go to my ServiceNow instance here and I will do agile. So you can see I have this module already enabled. I enabled it with the help of plugin. If it's not available in your instance, in your ServiceNow instance, then you can do that with the help of enable, en enable the plugin. You have to activate that plugin, Agile Development 2.0. Then you have to create authentication token in Jira. Now, as you have to connect to Jira instance, you have to have authentication so that ServiceNow can connect to your Jira instance. In that case, you have to go to Jira instance here, once you will register, you will get this instance. You will go at the bottom here, your profile and settings. You will click here. Once you will click here, you will see this option, account settings. Once you will click on this account settings, it will take you to the, this page. Here you have to click on security. Once you will click on security, you have to click on create and manage API tokens. Click on here. Once you will uh, do that, you can see I have already created one API token. But if, if you have a new instance, then you won't see any record over here. And then you can click on create API token and you can give it a label name and then you can create a API token. And it will also give you the API token, which you have to save somewhere, which you have to utilize in ServiceNow. Let's perform this development in our ServiceNow instance so that we can do this integration and we can create some records, we can fetch some data from Jira instance. In order to do this integration, you have to know the API documentation provided by Jira. So if you will go here, you will see the ServiceNow provides, so this is the URL which is mentioned in the description where you can see all the API documentation. That what exactly you can do with the help of REST API of Jira. We can see we can create issue, bulk create issue, get issue, we can create projects. There are a lot of things over here. So there are a lot of resources which you can utilize and then create and, and fetch data from Jira instance. So let's start with our instance. Now, in order to perform this development first, we will do a testing. We will see whether we are able to fetch data from Jira instance, the one which I have registered or I have Jira instance. For that, what I will do, I will go to REST outbound method. So if I click here, under outbound, you will see REST method. I will click here. I will create a outbound REST method. So it's Jira testing demo for YouTube. That's a name. You have to put the endpoint. Now, what should be the endpoint? So the endpoint should be, first of all, your instance name till here so you will go to your instance till here you will have this instance name and then you will check here and it says you have to add rest api 3 because this is uh, rest api version 3 so in that case you will do this add it and you will go here and you will add this. So this is my base uh, URL. This is the endpoint I have. Now I will select the authentication. So I will do basic authentication. I have to select a profile. I already have a profile that is Jira 2.0 where I have already used the username as 
email address, the email address which you are registering uh, your Jira instance, and the password would be that token key which you will get from Jira instance while creating that token. That's what you will get and that will be your password. Now I will just click on save. It is saved. I also have HTTP request. So maybe I will just put accept. Here it will be application slash JSON. I will copy this and I want content type and this should also be JSON. That's it. I will save this. Now I will go to my default get because when you will create this rest message, you will see your default get. I will click here. Till now I have this endpoint, but you, you can't connect to Jira instance or maybe you can't get uh, the data which you want because the reason behind it you have not added the resources you actually need to do this. So in that case, what you will do, you will go to your instance and we have to check how exactly I can pull the data and that will be querying and that can happen search for filters or maybe issue search. Now here we will do issue search, I think search for issues using JQL. So I will try to get some data from my instance. So this is what I need. So I have to send this call uh, till JQL and I can just utilize the JQL query. So if you will see like this, I could search for the records. So in this case, if you will go to my uh, instance right here, I have, I can put here a query that will be project project equal to SAS. This is what I need, SAS now, and I will click on search, and you will see all these data. So what I can do, I can copy this. So in that case, you will go to your endpoint here, you will add a slash, you will type search. That is what it is telling you. Let's take a look. Yes, search. So after three, you have to add search. Then you have to put question mark. You have to do JQL. And then you can put equal to and like this. Equal to project equal to SAS now. And you can click on save. Once you will click on save, you know, as of now you can see we have these HTTP headers blank. So let's try to put them. So we have accept application slash JSON. I have content type here again, application slash JSON. That's it for now. I can click on save. And now I will just click on test. Let's see what happens. It got succeeded. You can see we, we got HTTP status as 200. 
and we also got the response. We got around seven issues which we already have in our instance. Now, how exactly you can read uh, read this uh, JSON, this response? In order to do that, because this will be really helpful to you when you will do your coding. In that case, you need JSON Viewer. Now, this is the website which is utilized to see all the objects of your JSON. So, you can click on here. You can paste all the data you got from response and just click on Viewer. If you click here, now you will see the JSON data and you can see all the objects you have here. All the, all the objects and their values. The first use case is to create Jira record when a story is created in ServiceNow. That means in agile development, when you create a story, it should automatically create a Jira record in Jira instance. So let's go to ServiceNow developer instance. I will go to Agile over here. And here we have stories. If you click on stories. Now the condition is when you will create a new story, it should create Jira in Jira instance automatically. So in that case, what you have to do, you will write a business rule. So what we will do, we will go here, configure business rules. So I'm going to create a new business rule. Clicking on business rule here. I will give it a name as create Jira. Now when exactly I need to run? So there's no condition. It has to run every time I insert the data. So in that case, it should be after async or maybe let's do async. You can also do after, but as we are doing this integration, let's do async. Then we will do, then we have this advanced. So now we have to do this coding. So let's begin the coding. So this is the coding part now. So we have to create Jira record, that issue in Jira instance. So what we will do, we will start with body. So first I have to make the body. Now how exactly I can make this body, I will show you. You have to go here. Here you have one Jira example. And you can see we have this input data. So I'm just picking up this example where we have summary, issue type, and key. In that case, I will just pull this. This is kind of a request body payload. I will go to my instance and I will paste this. I'm just showing you each and every step that how exactly you can test it because it might happen that you might can you, you might you can do some mistakes so i just want i don't i just want that whatever i'm showing you you follow each and every step so first i will just structure this data whatever i got from there so i'm doing like this okay I will show you static data as well and also dynamic. So we will do a testing with a static and then we will make it dynamic so that whatever values we have in Jira, in ServiceNow story, we will automatically create in Jira as well. So that will automatically show in Jira. So in that case, uh, let me do this. So I'm just making this. And you can see I'm just like name equal to bug. So you can also create a bug if you want directly from here. Now in this case, I have to close this first because this is a string. Now we, we copy this JSON data. 
but we have to convert this in just directly as a string so that when it goes to the uh, like Jira system, we have to we have to show it as JSON data. Now, how exactly we can make it because you have added double quotation here, which we can't do that here. So in that case, you can do this, this. Here we have to change the key. The key is SAS. And for in place of name, I can make it story. And this is Jira demo. And in description, I can also write demo Jira description and this is Jira demo maybe summary so in that case I have here slash slash and I will do here as well so I will continue to do that now as you know because we are we are making the string so we can't have quotation in the string yeah so for for uh, for sending the quotation as a string you have to use this So we are doing this for this as well, wherever we want to send as a string. This one as well. This one, this one. We don't need to do this one because this is the quotation for string. So we have uh, created the body. Now we have to create our outbound rest message. So how exactly we can do that? We can type where we will create a request variable equal to new sn underscore ws dot you can see we already got so we have to do rest message v2 so we will do rest message v2 now we can do request dot we will set the endpoint so we will do set endpoint now what endpoint should be because we have to create now we have to create the record in that case you will go here you will check that how exactly we can create the record that means create issue we will come here and the URL would be so after 3 that means version 3 API we will just add issue and that should create it so in that case I will copy my instance, go here, and I will put the endpoint. Now you can make this endpoint dynamic as well as per your requirement. Now I will add here rest slash API slash three, and then I can add issue because I have to create issue. That's it. Then I can do request dot set HTTP method. So I have to set HTTP. I think that's not populating, but we have to do set HTTP method and that will be post because we want to create the record. So we will do post then we will do request dot set request body so you can see I am setting the request body which we created over there as a variable that will be body here now I will use 
var user. So user is my email address. So I will type email address. And I have registered a Jira instance with this email address. So now you can definitely create multiple users in Jira instance and you can you can utilize that as well. But it depends on the access that particular user uh, user has. So in that case, I have given the email address and then I will give password. Now password is the token key, the key which we got from Jira instance. I have saved that key somewhere. So let me check that. So maybe I have to get another key. So in that case, so let's go to Jira instance, go to API tokens and click on create API token. So I will click on or maybe I will first revoke this one. I'm revoking this one. Confirm. Now I'm creating new one. And so again, assess now. Create it. I have this API key. I have copied it to my clipboard. And I'm going here. And I am putting right here. It's there. Then I will do request dot set basic auth. That is basic authentication, which I'm doing here. I will give the parameter like user and password. And I can do request dot set request header because we have to put the request header and that will be accept. So accept would be application slash JSON. And I have to add other header that is set request header. And that will be content type comma. And I can just put application slash JSON. That's it. And then I can do where maybe just give a little bit gap here. Next line where I can do response. So how this response uh, would be coming, that will be request dot execute. So this is how I will I will get this. I will get the data so I will just send it now as of now because I don't need exact response as of now because we are just doing testing whether I am able to create the record or not so what I will do I will just do a gs dot log so that we can log whatever I'm getting so I can do whatever I'm response whatever response I'm getting from Jira instance I can just do that so response dot get body and that's it so this will be logged uh, um, in your in your transaction logs so that's what we are doing so in this case I will save this so I'm going to save this it is saved I just realized one thing that we have done a little mistake here you can see we have uh, used soap message, but we have to use rest message here. So I will do dot rest message v2. I will also try to just remove uh, maybe this description because we don't, we will just try with the summary for now. Uh, so we have used uh, just summary and everything else is okay. And I will save this. Once this is saved, now you can try to create a story. Here I will click on new. So as of now, um, I already created one issue. You can see we have eight JIRAs. Um, here I can do test for demo. I will 
save this when I will save this uh, it will send a call to Jira instance and should create one more Jira over here if I yep we can see and it says this is Jira demo summary you can see we have this whatever we mentioned over there whatever we mentioned in this script so as you can understand as of now this is static data which we are sending to Jira instance now what about dynamic data that means uh, whatever uh, whatever information you are putting over here why don't you put this short description in Jira summary in that case it will be really utilized and you can you can use other things as well like state maybe maybe acceptance criteria if you want that also you can use but let's just try just with short description so in that case what I will do I will get the short description so here I will do where um, I think we don't need to do that so we, we can just directly add it so maybe uh, till summary you have still here uh, so what we can do I can do this and just plus so till here I want and then I need just slash that and I have to put this like this plus again remove this and I can do current dot and I think that's a short description we have so it's a it's a short description field I can do short underscore description plus because I want to push that data to Jira instance so I will do like this and I need to add another double quotation like this I think uh, then you don't need anything uh, that's it so you can see we have current dot short description uh, we ha we are adding this uh, double quotation over here and then we have colon here and then I have uh, double quotation and comma that's what you need overall so in this case what I will do I will click on save now I will click on save And let's try to create another story so in this case I will create another story so I will click on new try to give different names so that you can just just recognize that particular Jira so here we will give demo with dynamic data from a story let's see I am clicking on save so I'm inserting the story and now I will go to my instance and I will refresh this awesome you can see we have received demo with dynamic data from story so in this way you can understand we are able to create uh, Jira record in Jira instance so this is overall post method let's consider another use case in which we will create a story in service now when new Jira is created in Jira instance that means it might happen that users are creating Jira's directly in Jira instance then how exactly you can get those data into service now because you have to create story as well now as this is not a bi-directional integration that means if you will create Jira instance Jira will not trigger any call to service now to feed the data 
in this case, in unidirectional, you have to trigger the call again for the same situation from ServiceNow to Jira instance. Because as of now, this is unidirectional integration. Now, in order to achieve this, we have to write a scheduled job so that you can continuously call Jira instance and check whether you have new Jiras and you can create a story out of them. So what we will do, so we have this table rm underscore story. So in that case, I will go to schedule job. So I will, because that's how you can keep on connecting to ServiceNow. Uh, to your Jira instance. That's how you can connect. So in that case, we will go to schedule jobs. I will click on new. I will create a new schedule job. Automatically run a script of your choosing. Yep. So I want, that's what I want. So I will click on here. That's what I want. I want to run a script. Here, I will do, I will give it a name. Story Jira Integration. As of now, I'm just keeping it inactive. Now we will start with a script. Now in order to do that, because we have to, uh, we have to create the story. So we will send a message. We will, we will uh, trigger a call from ServiceNow and then we will uh, fetch those records which we have in Jira and try to create it. Now, how exactly you will make it possible that you are not creating a duplicate story. Because you, if you have already created a story, which you have already replicated in Jira as well, then you don't want to fetch that particular, uh, that particular Jira from Jira instance. For that, what you need to do? You have to create a flag maybe. So let's go to your story here. We will, we will create a flag. Whenever we will create a new uh, story and we will get the response from uh, response from Jira system, we will we will keep that number. So in that case, what I will do, I will configure this form form layout. I have already created a field that's called external number. I will keep it here, external number, because whenever I will create any new story in ServiceNow and it will create a Jira in Jira instance and when I will get the response, I will save here so that I'm not repeating the numbers. So in that case, you have to do a check. So what we will do, we will go to our script. We will write a script here. So this gr story equal to new glide record. So I'm I'm checking this from the beginning, but I should not check is check it right from the beginning because I have to check each and every record which I am getting from Jira instance. Now, how exactly I can do that? First, I have to initiate the rest message. So I will start from here. First, uh, I, so I can just copy whatever I created previously. So because that kind of call I have to create. So you don't have to rewrite that. Maybe you can just go here business rules I have updated I have this one create Jira 
because your script will be quite same but with some different logic and and this script will keep on running as per the frequency you will mention so in this case i will copy till here and i will paste it here now as i'm not going to create any jira in jira instance so i will just remove this body here i have rest message i have this endpoint now here endpoint will be changed now what that endpoint would be the endpoint will be basically you have to do search so if you remember when i was showing the demo in the uh, in the beginning of my video you sh you you saw that we were fetching fetching some uh, in, uh, we, we were fetching some jira data from jira instance now you can check here so we have to do the same thing because we are checking all the jiras we have in jira instance so i am going to do search question mark and i'm putting jq L equal to and I will do project equal to and I will put sash that's my project name here I will do get I don't need to send anybody over here that's it my username and the password will be same so no change in that uh, request here if I have so I can just content type can be removed I don't need this because I'm not sending any kind of uh, request body so I don't need that uh, I have then response response dot execute now I want to create I want to create story from all the Jira's I have in Jira instance from all the issues I have over there now how exactly I would do that in that case first I have to get the response and then I will get the response in JSON format and I have to parse it so that I can read its objects get those objects and I can use it for creation of story so in that case what I will do I will first create a variable that is parsed data equal to json dot parse and here i can just put response dot get body this is what i can do and then i can now i have to do a loop here so i have i have got i have uh, parsed the data json json data uh, so I will get all the objects and its and its elements and its values basically from JSON record. Uh, if you remember, I am talking about this one. All these data. So in that case, so you can see we have different number of records. In this case, you have to utilize array because that's how you can read like zero, one, two, three, and you have to use loop. So what I will do, I will I will just loop and till when we will loop uh, till the number of total number of records I have minus one because we will always start from zero for array I have to start from zero so in that case I will do loop equal to and that will be parsed data dot total that's the object I have over there and I am putting minus one minus one so so that I can get the value to loop and then I will put for I equal to zero semicolon I is less than equal to loop semicolon I plus plus now here I will check whether that particular record is available or not how exactly I will check it so I will do where GR story now we will hit story table new 
glide record. Here I will put rm underscore story. Here I can put gr story dot add query. So we will do a query. And here I can put uh, the field which we have that is external underscore number. And I can do comma. Now here I can put parsed parsed data dot issues. So if you will see here, I have this issues. I'm just using that. And then I am putting array. I will put I so that it can loop. And then I will do key. I will do colon, semicolon here. And then I will do gr story dot query. So if I will not be able to find any record, then I will create it. So in that case, I will do gr story dot next and I will do something. So here, if I'm not able to find anything, then I will create a record. So in this case, I will do where g story story create equal to new glide record again same that is rm underscore story you can do gr story create dot initialize because i have to insert the data now I have to use the short description, whatever I have in Jira instance. So in that case, what I will do, I will do Jira story create dot short description equal to, I will use the data I'm getting from Jira. That is parse data dot issues so that's correct issues I and I will do dot I have to use fields now fields and I will do summary so I have fields and then I have summary how exactly I'm getting these fields I will show you you can see I have these fields but you can directly use this key after issues dot so I will go here and uh, I will just create it. So I, I will fetch the data, but I have to, I also need to put the Jira key. So I will do G Jira story create dot. Here I have u underscore external number equal to. So I will do parsed data dot issues i dot okay i don't need to do this i can directly do key that's it and i can do gr story create dot insert so i'm inserting this data i am formatting my code a little bit so it will insert the story if it did not did not find any record that means with that external number now you can see i have written wrong so your code will not run if you will write wrong syntax so i have number number everything seems to be right um I, i'm just logging this if you want to do that maybe every every time or it will just give me the whole uh, whole uh, response in the log so I have this for till here and I am just checking that that's it I have this next till here not okay so I am going to do save so I'm saving this 
and let's see how many records we will be able to create. So I'm just running, so I'm clicking on here, execute now. I'm doing execute now. When you will do that, let's see if I have Agile and I go to stories. Let's see all the stories have been created. And I will sort this. It's from Jet to A. So maybe I will I will do sort by created. Because number is not uh, giving me the right, uh, showing the right list. Uh, okay. So we have created these JIRAs. You can see demo with dynamic data from story. SAS outbound, this is a test. Uh, rest a gentleman, that's what we are using. And if you will see, I will show you one field so that you will see that it came with the same integration we did. This is the external number and you will see and answer is yes. So we have total nine records. Okay, we, we got more. So it got, I think you, you forgot one thing. So it also created back in Jira instance because you wrote that query. So you have to write it over there as well that if that particular number is available in Jira, in that case, you don't have to create it. So that those, those kind of checks you have to mention while doing this integration because then only your integration would be successful. But anyhow, our goal was to create data in Jira instance and to create data in ServiceNow as well by fetching the data from, uh, from Jira instance. So this is how you can do integration. Now, this is just a demo. Now, you must have seen my scripting. Uh, I, will, I will paste the script in the description as well. You can just refer those. But when you will do the live uh, integration, you just need to take this example. And as per your business requirement from your customers and clients, you have to customize your script as per your requirement and, and uh, business requirement, basically, whatever it's mentioned, what fields you have to match, what kind of data it has to be posed in Jira or in ServiceNow, that's what you have to decide because this is just a demo. So I hope you like my video, the whole integration, and you will be able to achieve the goal of integration for your organization or whatever your goal you have for integration. So thanks for watching my video. Have a great day.